When we think about the geography of Cuba, we might keep in mind two important ideas. First, Cuba is an island. Second, Cuba has a tropical climate. Let's learn more about this island and its people. Here are some of the people of Cuba. There are many different types of Cuban people, including those descended from the original Spanish settlers, those descended from Negro slaves brought to the island, and some descended from various European and West Indies peoples. Let's see what relationships we can find between these people and the big island on which they live. The tropical island of Cuba lies in the Caribbean Sea, just south of the United States and east of Mexico. It is only 90 miles from the United States, so near that the affairs of the two countries have always been closely related. Cuba's strategic position puts it on important sea lanes. Here, here, and here. Two of these lanes are gateways to the Panama Canal. Because of its strategic position, Cuba was called the key to the New World by the early Spanish explorers. The Spaniards settled Cuba and gave the island a Spanish government. They built many cities and gave them Spanish names such as Havana and Santiago. In Santiago, one of the first settlements, we can see today something of Spanish history in the old buildings and streets of this town. In Santiago, we find evidence of the Spanish in the great fortifications in Santiago Harbor. Here too are scenes of the Cuban struggle for independence from Spain, a struggle in which the United States took part. In Santiago Channel, a Spanish fleet was defeated by the United States in 1898. On San Juan Hill, American and Cuban troops won another victory. On the hill today, this memorial represents the combined Cuban and American fight for the island's independence from Spain. And so much of Cuba's history has been influenced by the importance of its island position as key to the new world. One way to see more of Cuba and its people is to go along the central highway. It extends from Havana to Santiago, a distance of about 700 miles. Starting in the city of Santiago, we meet more of the Cuban people, people of many different types who make up Cuba's mixed population. Following this bus, which goes from Santiago to Havana, we'll see more of the fertile, beautiful island. Here at the eastern end of the island are some of Cuba's highest mountains. There are mountains similar to these throughout the length of the island. It is here in the mountainous region of the eastern end that many of Cuba's forests and most of its minerals are found. Among the ores mined in eastern Cuba are iron, nickel, copper, and chrome. This mine produces manganese, an ore used in the manufacture of a hard type of steel. Among the many kinds of tropical trees that grow in eastern Cuba is mahogany. Much of the mahogany wood is exported to the United States. Moving westward along the island, we see green fields on both sides of the highway. Here, in the central portion of Cuba, are some of its most productive regions. Much of the land is used to grow sugar cane, the most important product of Cuba. Sugar cane is a tropical plant. And in Cuba's warm, moist climate and fertile soil, it grows so abundantly that five or six crops can be harvested from the same plants. Much of the crop is harvested by hand laborers who use sharp knives called machates. Let's meet one of the workmen in this field. His name is Jose Hernandez. He swings his machate again and again, cutting the ripe stalks. After cutting the stalks, Jose gathers them up and helps load them into a truck. Jose and the other men do not work in the fields during the hottest part of the day. 
from noon until about four o'clock, they go to their homes to rest, or as they say, to take a siesta. Jose and his family live in a simple thatched hut called a boio, which is on the sugar plantation. Jose owns a goat and a few ducks and chickens which his wife cares for. Near the hut are some banana trees that provide fresh fruit for the family. As in most tropical countries, life here is easy and pleasant. For the siesta, everyone goes inside the hut to rest. After siesta, work on the plantation is resumed. In the midst of the plantation is the central, or sugar mill, where the harvested sugar cane is brought to be processed. At the central, the cane is pressed and the juice is changed into raw sugar. In some mills, the raw sugar is further processed into refined sugar. From this single product, sugar, comes most of Cuba's wealth. And where is the sugar sent? Most of it goes to Cuba's close neighbor, the United States. What else does Cuba send us? Let's follow the central highway into the western part of the island to find out. Knowing Cuba's tropical climate, we're not surprised to see fields of pineapples along the highway. Like sugarcane, pineapples thrive in Cuba's fertile soil and year-round warm weather. Much of this tropical fruit is sent to the United States. Another crop which brings wealth to Cuba is tobacco. Certain varieties of tobacco are grown under cloth for protection from the hot sun. Cuban laborers handle the crop through all stages. The growing of the plants, the harvesting of the tobacco leaves, and the final making of cigars. This is one of the many cigar factories in Havana. Supervising the work is the foreman, Miguel Perez. Senor Perez is one of many men who earn their living in the tobacco industry. Let's follow Miguel Perez as he leaves the factory to go to his home in Havana. He dodges the traffic of the evening rush hour and runs to catch his bus for home. The bus passes the Prado, Havana's famous boulevard. Nearby is the University of Havana, open to all Cuban students. Among the students is Pedro Perez, Miguel's son. After classes, Pedro and his fellow students walk through Havana. They pass the Capitol, a beautiful building that resembles the United States Capitol in Washington. Later, Pedro and his friends find their way to one of Havana's lovely beaches. Cuba's beautiful beaches and pleasant climate are among the attractions that bring tourists from other lands. The Cubans, too, appreciate the beauties of their own land. Sometimes, for recreation, Miguel takes his family for a drive through Havana. Among the familiar Havana sights that the family sees is this statue of Jose Marti, the hero of Cuba's War of Independence. Here is Columbus Cathedral, named after the famous discoverer of the New World. Along Havana's docks are ships loading Cuban products that go to the United States and other countries. And near the mouth of Havana Harbor stands Moro Castle, one of the great forts that the early Spaniards built to protect their island, their key to the new world. And from then on until the present day, Cuba's history and geography have been closely related to its island position. Its nearness to America has made it a good neighbor a neighbor whose history is closely related to that of the United States. Cuba's natural wealth includes many valuable products. Among them are tropical woods, such as mahogany, tropical fruits, such as pineapple, special crops, such as high-grade tobacco, and, of course, 
the most important single product, sugar. These are some of the things produced by the Cuban people who live on the big island with the tropical climate. <laughs> 